If you want to help out and support the channel, there are a few things you can do. Go check out Flipside Gaming and use the promo code VOIDMAGE in all caps. This will get you 10% off all orders, $10 or more. And if you go shopping on TCGplayer.com, go use my affiliate link in the description below. That way, all purchases you make will go towards helping the channel. And lastly, go check out my Patreon. It's a more direct way that you can help the channel while also getting some more interaction. I appreciate all of your support. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Commander video. Commander Void here going to do a top 20 of the best cards from the whole year of 2019. I think this says a lot about this year, the amount of support that we ended up getting. Last year, I only was able to do a top 10. I could have technically done a top 20 for 2018, but I didn't just want to include uncommon legendaries that really weren't that good or even considered strong commander options. I actually wanted to pick cards that were actually being played as commanders. And my top 20 is filled with pretty good commander options. I don't think there's any stinkers on the list. My process going into this video was to just gather as much information as possible. I ended up with a pool of about 32 cards. So I had plenty of wiggle room and believe me, it wasn't easy settling on 20. But let's start it off here with the honorable mentions. Just a few cards that I didn't think were quite good enough to make it to 20. Omnath Locus of the Royal. Very solid commander option, but doesn't really do anything brand new. You did have the elemental theme in M20, but that was about it. For the most part, Omnath was just going to add on to the land strategy. Can allow you to draw cards, but it's more closer to the late game. And we do have some other commander options that give you a bit more card advantage. Sir Conrad the Grim, really love this guy, probably one of my favorite commander cards all year, but that's just a card that you play in a commander deck, not necessarily as a commander option, which I think if you're going to build Sir Conrad as a commander, you run into the same problem as if you were to build a Scytherix deck. People know exactly how you're going to win and what you're going to do to win. There is nothing surprising about the deck at all. This means from the very start of the game, people are going to focus you out, and it's not going to give you the experience that you wanted going into it. Garrod Conclave Exile is what I would consider to be this year's baby's first commander option. Which isn't to say you can't build a more competitive version of Garrod. You can build a more competitive version of any commander, but the populate mechanic is one of the easiest and probably the most boring mechanic from Commander 2019. Really new player friendly, especially compared to Madness, Flashback, and Morph. A lot of those cards can interact with the stack, and it's not always the easiest thing to understand the stack if you're just playing Commander for the very first time. In the first sliver, a lot of fun playing with Cascade slivers, but very much just the sliver experience. But what opportunities I did get to play it, it was quite enjoyable. And Morph on the Boundless, this is kind of an example of when five color options can kind of fall short. Not to say it was bad, but you don't really have much of an identity here. When your commander option is kind of all over the place and you're just playing tribal tribal, you have to ask yourself what advantage does Morphon give you over just a typical vampire tribal deck or dragon tribal deck, whatever you were going to go with before. I think down the road, Morphon might become an even stronger commander option, but for this year just fell a little bit short for me. So onto the top 20, number 20 is Kadena Slinking Sorcerer. Probably second to the Populate deck when it comes to just being ready out of the box. If you're going to go for the morph strategy, you only had to add a few more cards. If there's anything really against Kadena, it's that you're pretty much anchored to the morph strategy. You don't really have a lot of flexibility. Sometimes that's a good thing because you don't have to put any extra effort into deck building. A lot of the deck is already there for you to play. Number 19 is Pramicon Sky Rampart. I tend to reward creativity over popularity and I was really into the idea of a wall commander and not just a wall commander but a commander that can play a little bit more politically. You're going to make it so that everybody can only attack in a certain direction, which means you're going to make it so that certain players can only attack one player, they can't attack in the other direction, and a lot of how this deck is being built already is pretty much just a dirtling pillow fort deck. And while that is creative and it's different from pretty much every other commander on the list, you have to honestly ask yourself, does this make the game better? It might make it more challenging, but it doesn't really inspire me to be more creative and to think of other ways of winning the game. Number 18 is Urza Lord High Artificer. This is an example of just over-the-top power, and I tend to stay away from most mono blue commander options because they just tend to be heavily combo-oriented. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about Paradox Engine, but you still have nasty interactions with cards like Winter Orb and Static Orb. Being able to tap those with Urza's ability is ridiculous, and ask the average player what they think of stacks, it's not a very fun experience. 
Number 17 is Kenrith, the Returned King. To me, a bit better as a five color commander option compared to Morphon because you actually have an identity here. This is a political deck making deals with your opponents to stay in the game a bit longer. I think that's the beauty of this kind of commander. Now, like most mana sinks, you are going to have a lot of fun with infinite mana, and that's inevitable. But if you were looking for a more group huggish commander that was a bit more political in its playstyle, Kenrith is probably the best one for you. Number 16 is Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale. Because of the Brawl decks, we ended up with just a ton of support. Throne of Eldraine was just ridiculous for commander. And Sir Gwyn is kind of like Kadena, but sort of the advantage here is that you have a lot more to add to the deck, and it doesn't just have to be about knights, it could obviously be about equipments and taking advantage of a zero equip cost. Another advantage that I really like about Sir Gwyn here is that you're adding to Mardu. Mardu hasn't always had the strongest commander options, and definitely a lot less than Sultai, so... Even though you are anchored to a strategy for the most part, it's worth exploring in Mardu colors. Number 15 is Torbran, Thane of Redfell. Definitely a new player friendly commander option, kind of like Girid, but the directions that you can go in are pretty cool. You could play the typical burn spells like Lightning Bolt, or you could be a little less friendly and play cards like Mana Barbs. Mono Red is not really a strong option if you want to build a commander deck. It typically lacks consistent card draw, mana ramp, so if you can add to the burn spells, get more damage out of them, you're going to have a much better time. And I just really dig Torbran as a utility creature in other decks too. If you can just add another 2 damage to whatever red card's going to deal damage to your opponents and their creatures, it's just going to be so much easier to deal lethal damage to your opponents. Number 14 is Kaikar Wins Fury. One of the commander options of this year that I think a lot more people like than I did. Now don't get me wrong, I think Kaikar can be pretty powerful. And whenever you're playing with a spell slinger strategy, the option of Storm is always there for you. Your deck is most likely going to be cantrips. And it matters how many times you cast non-creature spells. So you're eventually going to run into things like Aetherflux Reservoir. And then suddenly the game is over. Now how I typically like to handle the spell slinger strategy is to just play good old fashioned counter spells. Play the long game with control and hopefully I can outlast my opponents you get flying tokens play other cards like tower and sky summoner you could have a massive token army flying tokens are no joke it also helps that you're in three different colors making the spell slinger strategy a little bit easier to build around number 13 is yagmoth thran physician looking back on 2019 you're going to know mono black just got the most support out of any color and it really started in Modern Horizons with Yawgmoth Thran Physician. Probably one of the best all-around creatures that can be used as a commander option. It's definitely a better way to go than Sir Conrad in my opinion, because the way of winning is not as obvious. Your deck is going to offer you ways of winning. It's not just going to be with Yawgmoth. He is just an engine. A very good engine that offers you card draw. I have to keep reminding people that when your commander can offer you card draw, even if it's not going to be the reason why you win, it is going to to put you in a much better position to win than a commander option like Sir Conrad that doesn't offer you that card draw. You also have just a million and one mechanics that you can fool around with. Negative one, negative one counters. You could also proliferate loyalty counters. You could proliferate poison counters. You could play with aristocrats. So crazy how versatile this commander is. Number 12 is Feather the Redeemed. Now we get to talk about actually satisfying a need here. At least Mardu had some decent commander options before Sir Gwyn. Boros has been terrible. It's always a challenge if you want to build a good Boros stack, but you're combining probably the two worst colors and commander, and it's usually going to be combat oriented. Feather allows you to reuse spells that will cantrip you into other cards, and getting to reuse those cards will speed up the deck and allow you to keep a full hand, something that Boros has never been good at. Now a lot of these spells are still going to be combat focused, and the idea is to eventually deal commander damage damage with Feather, but it's always a treat when you get to experiment with something new, and especially when that something new just gives you something you've never had before. Number 11 is niv -Mazette Reborn. Much different than the previous niv -Mazettes, they've all interacted with card draw. This niv -Mazette is focused on the guilds. Two color cards, you get to look at the top 10, and you get to add a card of each color pairing, which is just insane card advantage if you can abuse the ETB. You can keep a full hand, and there are a lot of good cards in just two colors. 
You have good removal like Anguished Unmaking, Supreme Verdict. But I think really what makes niv probably one of my favorite five color commanders this year is that it has the potential to be a lot more competitive. If you're familiar with the General Tazri Food Chain decks, if you substitute a few of those ally cards, you actually have the exact same powerful Food Chain deck. Arguably a little bit better because with niv you actually have the ability to search the top 10 and you can win the game pretty easily with something like Sirku Demir Lobotomist. But even if you don't like Food Chain and you don't want to go for that deck, you can just keep a full hand and play 5 color control, which I think is pretty good and worth it. Number 10 is Atla Palani Nest Tender. Probably one of the goofiest commanders all year. Getting those egg tokens, it's kind of like playing the lottery because once they die, it's just a guessing game as to what you're going to get out of your deck. I've seen a variety of different Atla Palani decks already. I've seen Good Stuff Naya decks where you're just playing massive creatures, things like Zakama, but I've also seen some token decks with Kikijiki. During Commander 2019, I predicted that Atla Palani was going to be one of the better commander options, and although she hasn't quite taken Taken off as I thought she would. She has at least been a good stuff commander that offers you a little bit more than Garrett if you want to experiment. Number nine is Chulane Teller of Tales. Now I know a lot of people are sick of the land strategies in Commander. They're all over the place. And I mentioned one earlier with Omnath Locus of the Royal, but Chulane does it the best way that you can. Not only are you going to be getting extra land drops, but you're getting that in addition to card draw, which is just the best engine possible. You don't have to wait for eight lands. Play some ridiculous cards cards like White Mane Lion that can return themselves to your hand, allowing you to constantly just reuse them. You keep drawing cards and you keep getting your land drops. And typically the best thing you can do after that is just play Control. You're in pretty good Control colors and Bant. Once you have a consistent engine, that's really half the difficulty in Commander. And to me, that's the only question mark remaining with Chulane. It's what you do with all of that mana and all of that card advantage. Number 8 is Yarok the Desecrated. I'm not going to lie to you, I don't like this commander. I'm willing to recognize that it was one of the strongest commander options all year, but I think just the idea of doubling the ETBs, it's been done before, and all this really does is just do it in a more disgusting way. I don't have anything against ETB decks, but when that's just the whole point of the deck is to just get the ETBs, your commander's just sitting there, and it's not like you're doing anything unique. You're just playing good permanents with good ETBs, and that's about it. They're all over the place. There's a wide variety. If it enters the battlefield and does anything, there you go. This even includes lands. That's so ridiculous. Even though I'm personally not willing to build a deck around Yarok, Commander Option or one of the 99, this has been one of the most powerful Commander cards all year. Number 7 is Elsha of the Infinite. Definitely one to go with if you want to play more competitively, but you can also be rewarded if you're not playing more competitively. Being able to flash in spells is always a good thing, and you have this in addition to looking at the top card of your library, which means you're effectively playing with an 8-card hand. Not only that, but because Prowess works with non-creature spells, you don't just have to go with a spell slinger strategy, you could build an artifact deck. The artifact variant is probably the most competitive variant. We have a lot of zero-costed artifact ramp. It makes it pretty easy to get your prowess up. It also makes it pretty easy to keep your turn going. If you can just cantrip into more zero-costed artifact ramp, you don't even have to rely on the prowess at that point. You can just use something like an Aetherflux Reservoir to win the game. But of course, the most competitive version of a commander deck shouldn't be the ultimate reason why it's ranked this high. I think you do have some good versatility here. You do lose something if you're not going for the more competitive builds. Good thing is that you're not losing that much. And number six is Anje Falconrath. Anje, Anje, I really don't think we care how it's pronounced anymore. Madness was one of the biggest question marks going into Commander 2019. There wasn't that much support for it, but thankfully the deck wasn't just about Madness. You were fooling around with discard abilities. You were also discarding cards like Squee, Goblin, and Bob, cards that are good once they're in your graveyard. But here we have another prime example. A lot like Yogmoth, you have an engine on a commander, so it's not really all on your commander to win you the game. It's just about setting yourself up in a position to actually win the game with other cards. It's not necessarily going to fill your hand up. It is a way to speed up your deck at the very least. And the good thing is that it wasn't as anchored to Madness as Kadena was anchored to Morph. She does offer you the flexibility of just benefiting off of discard triggers. Number 5 is one of my favorite commander options all year, Taysa Karlov. This is definitely better if you have to compare this to Yarok. We've done the ETB thing a million times. 
if you have what is essentially a panharmonicon for death triggers, we haven't done that before. I mean, we fool around with aristocrats all the time, but we never actually fool around with the triggers. Getting an additional trigger, it is just so explosive. You have certain things like Kokosho. If you can get double the death triggers, you're going to force your opponents to lose twice as much life. You're going to gain twice as much. There were token-related death triggers, and probably the most deadly are Grave Pact effects, making it almost a sure thing that your opponent's boards are going to be empty. Very much a commander that is good because of the deck you can build around her. Number four is... Golos Tireless Pilgrim. My opinion of this card has changed. I went into M20 thinking that Golos was more of just a good stuff five color commander and that's not really a good thing. However, Golos is more of a toolbox land commander, meaning that if you have a really good land in your deck, you can search it up immediately. We have a card like Field of the Dead. You just have a lot of good land interactions that you can take advantage of with Golos, in addition to the million different land strategies that already exist. Cool thing here is that you now have a five color land strategy deck. So you can totally just throw in a bunch of things that you probably wouldn't have thought to throw in together, like Omnath, Locus of Rage, Obnixilus the Fallen, just a lot of crazy cards that all fool around with lands. You have a land tutor, you can get any land on an ETB. So just that toolbox nature to get whatever you really need. If you need a strip mine, you can go get it. Definitely a commander option that is going to age really well. And number three is Corvold, Fey Cursed King. Throne of Eldraine was just ridiculous, I said this earlier, but these Brawl deck commanders are probably the most well-rounded commander options all year, arguably even better than Commander 2019 options. It kind of goes back to the days of Commander 2011, Commander 2013, where it wasn't just about one strategy, but a million different ones that you could synergize with. Corvald is one of the commander options that does that really well. Now, before Throne of Eldraine's release going over Corvald, I did compare him to Prosh Skyraider of Care. You have a lot of similarities here. You don't just have one way of building around this commander, and that's the beauty of commander. That's commander at its best. When it's not just the obvious commander damage, but you also have the ability to take advantage of death triggers. You have the ability to take advantage of tokens, counters, and it doesn't feel like there's a right way to do it. You just have a bunch of of possibilities that all seem pretty powerful and it doesn't hurt that you have yet another engine on a commander that can draw your cards number two is alayla artful provocateur now i'm a big fan of enchantment decks and artifact decks what you have here is the combination of both it's a little weird because you also have a synergy with flying creatures you get rewarded for playing those artifacts and enchantments by getting fairy tokens those fairy tokens are also going to get bigger off of Alila, making her yet another example of a commander option that can fool around with different strategies. I've seen really good artifact builds, I've seen really good enchantment builds, I've seen really good flying creature tribal builds. To me, what puts her above Korvald is probably how easy it is to play the deck without even having her out on the field. She just puts your strategy a little bit over the top rewards you with those creature tokens, whereas if you don't have Corvault out there, you're not going to draw as many cards. Your deck can be slowed down entirely. With Alila, you have token production, you have the ability to keep a board presence, stop your opponents from attacking you. There's more of a contingency plan in that kind of deck. And then we have number one, the card I think is probably the best commander option all year, and it's also what I think is the most creative one, Kirik, Son of Yogmoth. The return of Phyrexian mana is a very gutsy call, but it worked out perfectly. Now you could run into similar problems with Sir Conrad, where you just get focused out of the game. Now that's not so much in the danger of instantly winning the game, that is more of just this engine being so powerful. You're substituting black mana for two life, and that's pretty much it. You get insane cost reduction. When it comes to mana, you're still going to be paying a bunch of life, but that's the whole point of the deck is to balance the life loss with some life gain, making this whole thing worth it to begin with. Kirik also gets points for embracing his colors philosophy. It's all about paying life for more advantage. You're willing to make a deal with the devil. Maybe it's okay to lose half of your life earlier in the game. If it puts you ahead, you get more spells out there. And especially if you have that life gain. It's so easy to just play a Grey Merchant of Asphodel and recover most of the life you lost in the game. If there's any kind of downside to this commander, it is the potential to be punished if you overextend. 
all it takes is a board wipe and it's harder for you to recover. But this is without a doubt mono black at its best. You can make any kind of black cost cheaper. You don't have to force yourself to substitute every cost. You could only do certain black costs. That way you get to save up some life. You do have the freedom to be a bit more selective. But yeah, definitely my pick for the best commander option of 2019. But anyway guys, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think of the commanders from 2019. You all have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next video. Just wanted to say thanks to the patrons who are supporting me on Patreon.com. Go check it out. There are different tiers with their own rewards. One of them is having your name in the credits of my videos. I know it's not much, but it's something that I can do to show my appreciation. Thanks again and have a good day.